This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I finish off my images by editing color, contrast, and sharpening. And even though this video sits in this portrait retouching series, the techniques I'm gonna give you here will apply to any genre of photography. Personally, I like to give a very natural look to my images, making sure that the contrast is realistic and the colors still look natural. But just taking that extra 10 minutes on your images at the end before you present them to the world, I feel just makes them pop that little bit more and make sure that the image I'm showing you is the one I had in my mind's eye on the day. I know a lot of you will ask in the comments if you can still use these techniques in Lightroom and the answer is of course yes, but with limitations. The tools are over there, but I just find taking those extra 10 minutes and moving over to something like Photoshop gives me loads more control over my work and that little investment of time for me is definitely worth the control I get back in my images as I finish them off. So let's jump in. Okay so when I'm finishing off an image there's three things I'm looking to work with and those are color, contrast and sharpening. So let's start with color. I'm going to come down here to adjustment layers and I'm going to select color balance. Now you have to work out your mix of colors that you like to see in your images. I'm going to show you mine, but this is a good idea just to use this tool to play around with it and find out what mix works for the sort of look you're going for. I use quite a traditional mix, uh, pushing cool tones into the shadows and warmer tones into the highlights. And the way that I do that with this color balance tool, and by the way, you could do this with curves and uh, selective color and a load of different uh, tools in Photoshop. This is just a very easy one. Come up here to Tone and select Shadows. So first of all, whatever we use on these sliders at the moment will only apply to our shadows. So I'm going to push in, I'm going to overcook it a little bit. I'm going to push in some blues into my shadows and some cyans on that uh, top rung there. So we've cooled off our shadows quite a lot. Come down here to Midtones now and I'm going to push in some yellows into the midtones and some reds. So some nice kind of orangey tones in there. And the highlights, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to warm them. So some yellows and some reds. Let me go back into shadows. I'm going to put in even more cool tones into those shadows. Let's see how far we can push it. Mm, something like that. Okay, a little bit strong. So all I'm going to do is come over here to opacity. I'm going to dial this right down. I'm going to dial it up until I like where it sits. Somewhere about, I would say... That's 74%, something like that. So it's off and on. Quite, quite a neutral look at the start here. And the minute I turn that color balance on, you can see we push the cool tones into the shadows, warmer tones into the highlights. So that's the mix that I like, but definitely take some time with this tool. You might want a different mix to this. And this is quite a, quite a traditional thing. I do like to keep my colors fairly neutral and traditional and fairly close to what I shot them as. You might want to push them really hard and do something that feels a little bit more stylized. Next thing I'm going to do is come down here to adjustment layers and grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. Now I've gone over this tool in a previous video, which I'll link down below in the description. And you can take some time with that and see really how powerful this tool is and what you can do with it. But I'll show you how simply I use it here. And what I want you to think about when you're putting together the colors for your image is not just what colors you want to see, but what colors you don't want to see as much. So you need to be balancing out which colors you're pushing and favoring by adding saturation to and which colors you're dialing back and hiding more because you don't want them in the mix. I think a lot of people when they do color, they just think of applying a wash of a particular color over the top, but then you lose all that beautiful separation. So it's best to work with those colors individually. So with this tool here, I'm going to come up where it says master, hit the drop down and you can see we can work with individual colors here. So let's go to those blues. If I dial this lightness up and down, you can see that it's just selecting the blue parts, especially on his jersey down below. So in terms of the way that I like to shoot, I like to lose a lot of the blue in an image and dial it back. So even though I pushed it into my shadows to create that nice color separation, I don't want it to feature too heavily. So with that blue channel selected, I often just desaturate and darken slightly those blues because I want the warmer colors to feature more. I almost want a brown look to the image, but I don't, I don't want to apply a brown wash over the top. I want to get that brown tone with all the separation just by pulling some of the other colors out instead of just pushing brown in. So if I come up here to yellow, what I will do with yellow is I'm going to dial this slightly to the left on the hue slider. And you can see what that does in that video down below. But basically what it's doing is with the yellows, it's pushing these yellows more into the oranges. So I want my yellows to appear slightly more orange. And I might just 
saturate those a little bit. Again, less is more with this stuff, and I might brighten those up a bit. You can see what part of the image it's selecting. So just maybe something subtle like that. And that, to me, looks fairly good. Uh, I might just come up here to master and work out how much saturation I want for the whole image. So all this is going to do is dial the global saturation for the image. And I don't want too much more. I think probably plus five looks pretty good. So quite a subtle edit. All right, so let's move on to contrast. The first thing I want to do is I want more edge contrast of sort of all these fine details, especially the sort of dark parts and the features. And the best way I've found to do that is to come down here to adjustment layers and go and add a black and white adjustment layer on top. Now, obviously, we don't want to be black and white just yet, but let's see what we can do with this. So first of all, I want to create a bit of contrast in the image. And a great little formula for portraits to create that contrast is to dial the reds, which will be in the shadows on the skin to the left, and the yellows to the right to brighten them up. And we can take our blues because we know there's blues in this jumper below and probably in the background and the shadows and we can dial that down too. Something like that looks good, but just play with these sliders until you've got a good amount of contrast as if you were creating a nice black and white image. And then come over here to your blending mode and change the blending mode of this black and white layer to soft light. Now that is too strong, obviously, but if I take this opacity slider down to zero and I just start to dial it up until it's really making those those blacks in the in the hair and in the eyebrows and the and the pupils and the eyes nice and rich if i turn that on and off you can see what it's done it's really just sort of crunching that contrast back down to sort of add some some richness to those shadows so that is a nice base to build on i would then probably grab another adjustment layer and just use a curves layer First thing I want to do with curves, if I pull in, and you'll probably, most of you will know this, to create some basic contrast, you just want to create a shallow S curve, something like, I mean, obviously that's a very steep S curve, but I want to pull this too far to show you that if you just use a curves layer like this, you're also affecting the saturation. Now, it's very saturated because I, I'm pulling contrast and saturation together, and that's just too much. So if I just grab these nodes, pull them off the bottom to delete them, what I'm going to do is come over here to my blending mode and change the blending mode of this curves layer to luminosity. Now, and I'll pull it too far again. Now you can see when I pull that, it's only affecting the contrast and it's not saturating the image. So again, I'm just going to create a shallow S curve. So pushing my highlights up. For those of you who don't know curves, left to right along the bottom here is your black point, shadows, midtones, highlights, and white point. And basically they're all represented on this curve. So by grabbing a little point here on that highlight line and pushing it up, I'm brightening the highlights and grabbing a point here down near the shadows and pulling it down, I'm creating some nice contrast. That, to me, is looking pretty good. And on top of this, just to check the last little thing for my uh, contrast to see where I'm sitting, I'm going to add a levels layer. So coming down here to adjustment layers and putting levels on top. Again, this is very similar to curves and that bottom sort of x-axis of the curves in that we've got black point and then shadows. You can see in the data above on this histogram where all that information is lying. And then your mid-tones, highlights, and white point. If I hold down Alt and I grab this white point uh, little um, handle here and I pull to the left, can you see that? As I brighten the image up from this right-hand side, pulling the white point across, it's showing me what information I'm blowing out on the image. If I let go of this, it's going to look horrible. You see that? I've blown all that out, and it's telling me that digitally. So if I dial that all the way across, I can just start to pull this across to see, okay, I'm starting to burn information on the cheek, so pull it back. So in this case, I probably wouldn't want to do very much. I probably want to leave it right where it was. But if you really want to tuck in that contrast, you can take a look. And if you've got lots of space here, and you've got room to move this across without burning that information, then you can start to pull it over and, and, and really tuck in that contrast. Probably going to take this to 252, something like that. That looks good, it's pretty safe. I'm not losing any information. And now I can do exactly the same here on the left. I can hold down Alt and grab this black point slider. And as I hit it, you can see that it's telling me that nostrils, bottom of the goatee there, and just in the hair, I'm starting to lose some black. But if I pull it across, you can see it's telling me what I'm losing. So if I pull it all the way over here, you can see all this information is gone. And it was telling me that digitally rather than just having to try and visually see what it was. So if I grab Alt and dial it all the way back, I can just tuck this end like this. So mm, just two looks good to me. I think that looks pretty good. I don't want to do too much. I can already see I'm losing some black in the hair here. Uh, when I hold this down, I can see where I'm starting to lose information. And that's okay, because I don't mind some, some rich black texture in the image, but I don't want to go too crazy. And now with my midpoint, 
I'm going to finish it off. I'm going to dial this to the left a little bit just to brighten up. And that looks pretty good. So my highlights are protected. I'm not losing too much shadow detail. And the mid-tones are sitting so the skin looks still nice and bright. So uh, let's just take a look at what we've done so far. If I turn off all these layers, you can see that was our starting point. We added nice kind of color mix into it, cooling off shadows, warming highlights and mid-tones, uh, affecting some of those sort of dialing back the blues, pushing the oranges. We added some nice contrast with that black and white layer. Then we added a curves layer to sort of really finish off the global contrast and then just that levels layer to check and give that last little bit of punch, making sure we're not losing any detail. Then just to finish off, I wanna sharpen the image and make sure that I've got a nice amount of crisp detail for export. So what I wanna do is hit Alt, Control, Shift, and E, which is gonna give me a stamp visible layer. It's gonna take everything I've done underneath and combine it all together and put it on its own layer above so that I can sharpen this layer on its own. Now with this layer selected, if I come up here to Filter, down to sharpen, unsharp mask is what I'm going to use. And let's just dial this preview window so I have the eye and especially the eyelashes. That's what I'm looking for. That's going to be my, my marker. Now, this is a pretty powerful tool and you can definitely find videos online that will go in depth. But just for argument's sake here, I'm going to use my settings and you can probably copy these for most scenarios and get some good results. So I use 100% sharpening. You can go higher than that or lower than that. I just leave it at 100 I'm going to use two pixels radius because I want it to be able to pick up fine details like these hairs. If it was up at 30 pixels, it's going to miss these. So it's right down at two pixels. And then the, the slider that I'm going to use to dial this in is my threshold. So if I dial this right up to 255, you might struggle to see this on the preview window because I know that YouTube will compress this. So you might struggle to see the changes and difference. And I only want a very subtle change, but play with this tool for yourself and see. So threshold at the moment, right at the top here means that it's full threshold. It's not letting through any sharpening whatsoever. But as I dial this back, it will start to add it. And at the moment, it's not really doing much. It's not really doing much. But as I start to get to the very low numbers, it's going to kick in. And I would say between 15 and 4 or 5, that's where you're going to start to see the sharpening kick in. And I usually pick between 4 and 10 somewhere. So 4 is a little too sharp here. So let me put it at 6. And that looks pretty good to me. I like what that's done. So I'm going to zoom in so you can hopefully see. And I'm going to turn this off and on. So that's off, no sharpening, and that's on. Hopefully you can see it's just crisped up the edges. I'm sorry if you can't see on YouTube. Obviously, it, with that compression, it's often tough to see. But definitely play around with this. And that is a good amount of subtle sharpening for me. The only problem with this tool is it's sharpened everything, including the skin detail, which I don't want. I don't want it sharpening pores. So I'm going to come down here to my mask, add layer mask. I'm going to click this. Then I'm going to hit Control i or Command i on a Mac, which is going to remove that sharpening effect from the whole image. So it's gone. It's not sharpening anything at the moment. Then with white foreground color, I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to paint this effect back in on that mask. Make sure my, my brush is at 0% hardness, nice and, nice and soft. And I just want to paint in the features that I want to sharpen. So with my square bracket keys to change the brush size, I'm going to paint eyebrows. That's going to sharpen them back up. Eyes is going to sharpen those eyelashes and eyes. I'm going to leave the nose because it's out of focus on this shot. I'm going to do lips. Maybe just a little sweep on some of that stubble as well. I'm going to do beard at the bottom here and just come up to the top and do the front of the hair that's in focus. And then what I've done is I've applied that sharpening, but only to the features and not the skin. So if I turn that on and off, you can see that's off. That's on. I hope you can see that on YouTube. But as I say, play around with this yourself. But because I haven't applied it to the skin, I'm still keeping that skin soft in comparison. And that is pretty much done. So I hope this video has helped. And just to remind you that this video is the fifth in a series on portrait retouching where we've already covered natural skin retouching, enhancing the eyes of your subjects, shaping the light on the face using dodge and burn, and replacing backgrounds by adding texture and color to make your subject really stand out. I'm really proud of this little series because it's the series I wish I had when I was starting out in portrait photography 15 years ago. It would have saved me so much time in trial and error trying to get the look that I wanted if I had these videos to work through. So I hope in your case, 
it's given you that little jump start on your photographic journey. I was going to end the series here, but a few of you have messaged me asking if I could do a video on how I convert my portraits to black and white. So I'm going to add one more video which will come out next month showing you how I take that color portrait and convert it to black and white. Not just hitting desaturate so you get that kind of milky black and white, but really working to create contrast that pops without losing detail. So if you want to see that video, make sure you're subscribed, you have notifications turned on, and keep an eye out for that video next month. And lastly, thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them as my website of choice for over a decade now. It's really important for me personally when it comes to my website to make sure that my work is doing the talking and the design takes a back seat and just supports that work. And the great thing about Squarespace is they have a whole host of templates produced by professional designers who really know how to keep the clutter to a minimum and let your work do the talking. I've recently done a little refresh on my website, moving from the Wexley template to the Wells template, just because I felt like a bit of a change. So if you want to go and see an example of a website with a very, very clean look to it, I'll leave a link to mine down below, or go across to the Squarespace website and browse through some of the templates they offer. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.